Foundation. I think with uh, Trump's election in the United States now, the question of what mayors can do becomes quite important. Uh, all sorts of other bodies that are not the federal government. How do you see mayors in the U.S. responding to this and, and taking this forward? You know, uh, how do you like citizen? Uh, it's my it's, uh, domestic affairs in the U.S. are not my business, but I can still uh, tell you my opinion, what I think about it. I'm a bit worried um, by the outcome of the American elections, by what the uh, president has said. Obviously, he's surrounded by climatoseptic people. So the message we will be conveying, women, but also committed mayors, is that we cannot uh, be skeptical about climate change. There is no room for that. Uh, I was not mayor of Paris at that time. I was elected in Paris at that time. I remember that period when George Bush uh, was the president, and he was himself a climate skeptical person. And the mayors, the American mayors, I remember, they gathered, and there was a mayor for 400 American mayors who had another vision. And it's a very serious uh, uh, affair. You know, the U.S., they were accompanying the Paris Agreement. It's worrying to hear skeptical um, opinion uh, about climate change. But we, the mayors, we are going to say that this agreement will enter into force. Why? Because it goes through ourselves. It goes through the private sector that understood that in the ecological transition, in the energy transition, uh, it's the future of the planet that is at stake, but there are also economic opportunities that are now rising. There are visionaries, there are pioneers in the private sector who are going to turn towards uh, renewable, recyclable energies and they will um, uh, exit the fossil, let's say, energy uh, uh, cycle. So you have on the one hand the private sector, you have the NGOs too, they have always played a, a pioneer role and they have been uh, 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 very active. And also the cities, the cities are actors. Uh, and we are very independent. It's not the heads of state who decide uh, if yes or no uh, the Paris Agreement is uh, uh, implemented or not. We are independent, autonomous. Our convictions comes from the field observations, comes from our actions in the field, and we will keep on acting that way. And we will demonstrate to the skeptical people that they have no room anymore, that they have no more role to play. The cities in the planet represent 70% of uh, GHG uh, emissions, but this is also where we can find solutions. And I will suggest an alliance at the international level uh, with the uh, committed states, with Europe. Europe is very important, and more specifically now, it's important to have a strong Europe, united Europe, which has not always been the case. And I would like to propose this alliance and tell the private sector that you, you are also looking for new perspectives, new, new opportunities. Our cities are accelerators. Our cities are the place where you can invest. We need private investment to support public uh, investment. And we will uh, help this movement move forward uh, speedily and demonstrate to the skepticals, even if they are president of the United States, that they're wrong and that we are right. Laurence. I will do that. I think uh, uh, it took two years in Australia from a very climate skeptic government to be an active one. With not a change in the and with a change of the in the vote because of this, it took less than one year for George W. Bush to be a climate denier, a climate skeptic, to somebody uh, re-engaging. So. Uh, as Anne said, uh, if the states and the cities come and see uh, Mr. President Trump and the business and the investors, 
the US ones, and globally, I think that maybe take less than one year this time. Merci. Alors, allez-y. Ed King from um, Climate Home. Uh, two quick questions. Executive Secretary, has the UN made contact or received any assurances from the US Republican Party or the Trump Transitional Committee on its climate commitments? And perhaps one question for Anne and Laurence. Um, on the theme of women, Marine Le Pen, a fierce critic of the Paris Agreement, seems to be two to one to win the French presidential election. Um, why do you think parties that support isolationist and nationalist policies in the US and Europe are winning support? And why and how should policy makers in the climate arena take note? How should you adapt your policies to take note of this? I'll talk about the previous comment. Uh, extremists are indeed gaining ground, but uh, uh, it doesn't mean that our perspective, the one I have, is a, an extreme or populist perspective. The populist pr perspective is in no way, it's a... Obviously, after what happened in the US, after the Brexit, last June and the future French elections, we need to um, think very carefully of all these men and women who think they have been uh, forgotten in the globalization. So in our countries, uh, some people tend to say that uh, only pioneers, only those who succeed in globalization uh, have their place. And this has led also to difficulties and to the lack of understanding of part of our citizens and public opinions. However, it doesn't mean that they're right. It's not because you're frightened, you're fearing, let's say, this uh, current globalization, that the response should be racism, xenophobia, sexism, and uh, protectionism. In such a situation, our countries, and this is what I'm trying to do in uh, my uh, city and in many larger cities in the world, we have progressive uh, mayors. We, are, we have mayors who are aware of the need of uh, uh, gathering the whole population. You know, in our large world cities, we are seeing a population that is doing well, very creative population of uh, uh, people who have degrees, who think that the world is not something you have to fear, but the place where they can uh, move and evolve. We have a very fragile, vulnerable population, a population that is uh, looking for protection, and more particularly in our large cities, because they know that there, there are structures, entities that can help them. Within these fragile populations, we have uh, nationals, but also refugees. And we also have a middle class population uh, that is um, at the basis of our cities. The workers, people who are working in private services, public services, and we, the mayors, we know that we have to make sure all these populations can live, but not uh, opposed to one another, but in a, a unique and common community that provides protection, but at the same time allows those who are not afraid from globalization, those who are doing well, to continue being creative. I think that's also the challenge uh, uh, we'll have to be up to. And there's another democratic approach, and we are here at the right scale in our cities. We have processes, commitment uh, association, 
uh, commitments, real citizens, participatory budgets. This is the right size to do things. The local size, even in larger world cities, in order to make sure nobody is excluded from progress. And this is indeed a, a large challenge. And the climate challenge, if it's not only uh, it's not only a technical uh, change, we, we can also provide this social ambition. Hello. The Secretary General has made a statement after the, the election where he has uh, stressed that today the global challenges demand concerted action and that we really need to gather together to uphold the shared ideals the, to combat climate change. This was one of the issues he um, mentioned to advance human rights, to promote mutual understanding uh, in order to achieve a world of peace, dignity, and opportunities for all. On our side, we have also said that we stand ready to work with the new administration, and um, we are open to entering into dialogue with them. I think it's very early to have a direct contact yet, and we will respect, of course, the times that uh, for the new administration administration are, are uh, convenient, but uh, we remain open and, of course, we believe we have lots of information to provide in order to contribute to getting this picture, like Anne Hidalgo is, um, is, is presenting, of opportunities, of uh, challenges, but at the same time of uh, really the hope for a better world for everybody. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Et nous allons, uh